My name is Federica and I'm part of the DOCSI2 team and it's my pleasure to introduce you to this um, live seminar of Yom University. As mentioned, please write all of your questions into the Q&A box and our speakers will answer during the second part of the presentation. I'll now leave the floor to Stefania Romenti. Thank you, Federica, and welcome. Welcome to everybody to this seminar. I am the coordinator of this master program in strategy communication. And, uh, and this evening, I would like just to introduce you this master program and to tell you the basic information about this master, master program. So just to uh, tell you uh, why you should select this master program for your uh, future, uh, future studies. I wanted to uh, first of all, to share my presentation, uh, just a second, uh, in order to, um, to share with you uh, some information. And first of all, I want to um, try to be very precise and clear about what is a strategic communication. What, what uh, um, does it mean, a strategic communication? Um, and strategic communication, first of all, as you can see, uh, the searches, uh, uh, Google searches for strategic communication label are increasing uh, since uh, about about 500 million of times people searched strategic communication in the web in 2020, for instance. And I want also to show you um, three photos, three pictures, and probably you don't see them, but these are persons very, very important in the field of strategic communication. And what I wanted to tell you is that their experience is in the same profession professional field, which is a strategic communication, of course, but in completely different sectors, because you can uh, work with strategic communication in sectors, professional sectors, which are completely different. For instance, she is the first one. She is Sherry Johnson, and she is expert of strategic communication at the Stafford Public School, so in the public sector. In the middle, you can see the former head of strategic communication at the White House. And finally, she is the former Lithuanian president and as you can see, um, she uh, showed the um, symbol of NATO because uh, in, in NATO, in the NATO institution, uh, there is a center, a strategic communication center for excellence. So as you can see, they are all experts of strategic communication, but, but they work in the public sector, they work at the political level, they work in international institutions. Why that? Because strategic communication encompasses all communication that is uh, very important, fundamental, substantial for the survival and the success of an entity. And the entity could be a business entity, so for instance, a corporation, a business company, but also a government, uh, but also not for profit organizations or social movement. So if you adopt a, social, a strategic communication approach, uh, you use communication in a purposeful way uh, and you engage in conversations of strategic significance uh, uh, for the company or the, um, uh, or the entity's uh, goals. And uh, if you adopt, is, 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 if you learn strategic communication, uh, you learn to formulate ideas uh, about strategic communication plans, obviously, but also to execute them, to present them, to promote them, and also to implement them and at and finally at the end also to measure the results. Okay, so uh, this is just uh, a very uh, short and brief definition of what is a strategic communication. And another thing uh, that I wanted to tell you is that. Uh, we all um, we always monitor the strategic issues for communication management. So uh, for this. You can see here uh, five trends, five uh, strategic issues in the field of strategic communication. Uh, the source is the European Communication Monitor, which is one of the most important and extensive research in the field of strategic communication. And if you wanted to consult the, uh, the research report, the, um, the full uh, research report, you can consult this uh, website address. And um, I wanted to tell you that we always monitor these strategic issues 
in order to integrate them in our uh, in the contents of our master program so uh, we uh, take them under control uh, also because we are the italian official partners of this research so uh, every year we discuss these issues with our professors and we invite them to integrate these issues with for instance international experts and speakers in their courses and as you can see the first, the first uh, very important strategic issue is the link between business strategy or corporate strategy and communication, obviously. And the second one is coping with the digital evolution. So strategic communicators should be able to cope with the digital evolution. Uh, that's the reason why I have invited Professor Grazia Mortarelli, who is our professor of digital communication management, uh, to show you just a very short example example of some contents that she teaches in our classes about the digital evolution. So what does it mean to cope with the digital evolution in the field of strategic communication? So I leave the floor to um, Grazia now. Please, Grazia. Thank you, Stefania. So, okay, welcome to everybody. And uh, it's my pleasure to share with you uh, so my presentation about uh, an interesting topic that is a uh, one of the future trend for uh, strategic communications. So uh, my aim today is uh, to provide you with, uh, um, so to give you a little taste of, uh, of what happens during my course. And uh, most specifically, I would like to introduce you this uh, uh, trending topic of a digital transformation process. So when we talk about the digital transformation process, so we talk about the use of algorithmic function or smart machine that are impacting our daily life. So um, what we need to understand that as a communication professionals, we need to know this phenomena in order to manage it, in order to contribute to the success of our modern organization. So if your intent is uh, to become a communication professional, uh, you need to tackle the digital transformation process and you need to also suggest and drive innovation strategies. So uh, that means that uh, you need to know the most important digital trends such as cloud computing, uh, such as edge computing or artificial intelligence. In this lesson, we will focus more, seminar, sorry, we will focus more on a specific application of digital transformation that is based on artificial intelligence, that is the use of um, chatbot that many organizations nowadays use for managing a relationship with customers, with stakeholders, and with publics. Let's begin with an example, a, re a recent example. So um, I don't know if you have heard about this new, this is a recent news published online uh, concerning a possible use of chatbot. At the beginning of January, it was reported that Microsoft uh, filled a, a patent uh, for developing a chatbot for talking with uh, reincarnating people. So, uh, and this is uh, something that totally changed uh, our way of, uh, of, uh, of sharing information and our way of thinking about uh, these new technologies. Because uh, uh, as you can see from the slide, in this case, instead of using uh, uh, the conventional method of uh, training a chatbot using the conversations, um, from a wide sample of users, the user usually when you plan and when you develop a chatbot, you take information about a sample of users in order to program the chatbot. In this case, Microsoft raises the possibility of uh, uh, creating a chatbot from the output of a specific person. So. Uh, I posited also in the slide uh, some sentences concerning uh, uh, the, uh, the use of uh, um, what kind of data Microsoft want to use, uh, because they wanted to use uh, uh, 
data from uh, social media, from instant messaging, for uh, also written made from uh, the specific persons. So what are the consequences for communication professionals and for you that want to study in this field? That, uh, as you can see, nowadays, um, the chatbot need to be trained uh, to the individual personal traits, so need to be trained to the conversational attribute. That means that the development of a chatbot is not the sole responsibility so of an ICT department, as many of a professional things, but also professional communication and communicators could contribute uh, to the development, so could provide uh, the contribution in helping organizations. Uh, so during my course, uh, what uh, usually I do is uh, to train my students in acquiring these kind of uh, competencies. But I would like also to, um, uh, always about chatbot, uh, describe you and provide you uh, some different perspective, because when we analyze a phenomenon uh, like chatbot, like a digital transformation, in the class, we usually adopt uh, uh, two main perspectives, the user perspective and uh, the organizational perspective, because uh, you need to put ourselves uh, in uh, both part shoes. So uh, on the left, uh, you can see uh, the possible reasons. So why digital users uh, would like uh, to, to use a chatbot uh, uh, within a different, of course, uh, industry and the different settings. And as you can see from the most uh, clicked answers, we can, uh, um, we can take note about some benefit coming from the use of chatbot. Uh, quick answers for uh, uh, solving situation, possibility to resolve a complaint or getting detailed information. So uh, by exploring the digital attitudes and the digital users' needs, we started to collect information that can help us as communicator for developing a good chatbot or an, or an effective chatbot. From the other side, we have also the organizational perspective. I uh, wanted to show you uh, the most, there are the top five industries where chatbots are mostly using, uh, taking into account that by 21, uh, researchers, researchers say that more than 90% of organizations will uh, invest the resource in uh, chatbot technologies. Uh, but for what concerns, uh, especially because uh, this is uh, uh, a new way of interrelating uh, with, with users, so it's uh, something that attracts uh, organizational interest. But giving, so I would like to give you more details and more practical example of chatbot conversations in order to understand better what are the possibilities for strategic communicators. So uh, let's see to some example, and uh, I would like to, uh, this is a, something that I use during my courses. So case study, the possibility to, uh, to live, so to live a role playing situation. So we need to start from a practice and going back to discuss the theoretical insight, because at a master level, you need to acquire practical knowledge to put into action and uh, so to implement immediately uh, after the completion of, uh, of the course. So uh, the first example that I wanted to share with you is uh, the use of chatbot in the fashion industry and luxury management. Fashion industry is one of the industries that we discuss it mostly because provide us with uh, interesting insight concerning the use of social media. Uh, in the slide, that you uh, can find uh, find the example from Barbary. Uh, so, uh, and you can notice that, uh, especially for what concerns uh, uh, the use of chatbot, chatbot can provide the possibility to assist uh, of course, customers in selecting the right product uh, could uh, offer uh, service. And uh, especially in the fashion industry, chatbots are using uh, in replacing a human service assistance. So um, this is a one of the function of chatbot in this industry. Um, the second uh, function is uh, to provide a direct link to the e-commerce. Uh, and as you know, this increases the possibility to uh, augment the conversion rate that is uh, one of the most uh, um, 
So one of the most important aim for a company is so to convert people using chatbot in real clients. And the chatbot can help to do this for, uh, by facilitating the process. And the, finally, another uh, function is uh, to set alerts. Uh, so I don't know if you are aware about it, but uh, we are overwhelmed by information. So uh, it is very important for organization to attract our attention. Uh, our attention level is about five seconds, so less than a fish. Uh, so chatbot can help organization is attracting immediate attention of digital users. The second industry that we usually um, discuss is about uh, uh, so is the healthcare that is another uh, sectors and industry where technology uh, gain advancement so is interesting from a social media point of view and uh, here you are some uh, three practical example this is a real app that include chatbot services and uh, especially in healthcare, chatbots are used for uh, handling requests, handling inquiries, but also for making a diagnosis and also for helping uh, people in, uh, um, in conducting a therapy, so in taking on a therapy. So, uh, and you can notice how, how much of these uh, technologies could impact our daily life. So uh, it is important for our communication professionals also to evaluate the impact of such technologies for digital users. The last example, so uh, and then we will go to discuss about uh, the challenges for uh, communication professionals. Uh, the last example coming from hospitality and travel industry, also in this case, I don't know if you uh, are used uh, uh, with chatbot, but uh, you can use chatbot for making reservation, vacation planning, or for uh, positing the queries and complaints uh, directly to the company. So in the example, I would like to show you the Marriott International uh, chatbot. So, uh, but, uh, okay, this is examples can help us in understanding the benefit from, uh, uh, from the use of chatbot for organization, but of course, there are, there are some risk factors. So uh, there, are, there are some issues uh, that represent the challenges for communication professionals, because uh, in this case, co communication professionals could really uh, provide a real contribution for the success of communication process. And uh, three main risk factors for what concerns the use of chatbot. First of all, chatbot allow organization to collect a huge volume and a huge amount of data. So maybe you know the term big data because you are familiar with this term. And of course, chatbot can allow to collect information about users' habits, users' attitudes, but also um, users' uh, uh, emotions and feelings. Because uh, of course, when you talk with a chatbot and uh, uh, you have not the answer, you can get angry and express your feelings uh, by writing to the, to, to the chatbot. So uh, chatbot is managing a huge amount of data. The second factor that is also a challenge for communication professional is represented by the need for humanizing this chatbot. So uh, a, a recent research that we conducted at the university with one of the students of the course in strategic communication explored the use of chatbot in uh, fashion industry. And uh, we collected it by using, of course, a questionnaire, so a quantitative a method of analysis is some information about what are the major risk perceptions from millennials. And the millennials ask it for chatbot with more empathy. So chatbot that could appear more humanized compared to the cold technologies that nowadays is currently used by the organization. The third and the last indicators the privacy issue. It is connected to the big data availability because when you use chatbot, you provide the personal information. So nowadays, organization, especially digital users, sorry, are afraid about how organization could 
use of these data so uh, our organization can uh, use relevant and personal information and that this could limit uh, the use of chatbot. So these are three subfield when you will be called to operate. So, and you need, of course, to acquire all the tools uh, for managing these three issues. So uh, how to face these challenges? Uh, the last part of uh, this uh, uh, brief seminar, uh, we'd like to address uh, some uh, specific uh, uh, competencies that you need to develop and uh, that we uh, usually discuss during my course with the students. Uh, the first competence that you need to develop is about the use of uh, social intelligence. So, uh, sorry. So, uh, you need to... Uh, to develop competencies for analyze, analyzing data, for interpreting data, uh, and for managing different sources of data, because they are not only social media, but if you think that we are registered uh, for the 95% of our actions, it means that if you geolocalize yourself, if you buy by using your credit card, or if you are, uh, if you subscribe to a fidelity program, it means that uh, the net and the web is full of your information and of your data. So organization need to be able to manage this these information. The second competence that you need to develop is about uh, the use of strategic messaging. Uh, we will learn and uh, usually we discuss in our class about how to write to digital users. So you are talking with people with different attitudes, with different, um, with different aims and with different feelings and emotions. So you need to adapt your communication and you need to, uh, to be aware that you can frame your message in different ways. And this is a something that, uh, of course, you need to, to develop as a skill and that is required by organization. The last competence uh, is, uh, con uh, is related to the topic of uh, digital risk and ethics. Uh, maybe compared to other professionals within the company, you will be the responsible of uh, uh, spreading a digital culture within the organization. So as a communicator, uh, your task will be not only to convey a message from internal to external environment, because this is an old view of C communicator profession, communication professional. So what you need to, uh, to learn is that you can act internally as a strategic professional. So you can contribute strategically by also educating and training your colleagues in understanding the potentialities of digital technologies. Because what is missing nowadays, what it seems to missing is about especially the, uh, the use of, uh, is about, uh, okay, the uh, organization needed to be aware about the potentiality, about risk, but also about opportunities. So what is, uh, seems to miss uh, is uh, a digital culture and uh, the unique person that, the unique professional that could uh, uh, provide this culture is the communication professional, the digital communication professional. So uh, only to provide you with uh, a brief insight for each competence. So only to uh, give you uh, more information for what concerns the social intelligence, you know, so you see in the slide the different uh, sources. Um, you need to be able and you will be required to transform these uh, insight into action. So when we talk during my course about data, we don't talk about theoretical data, but we need to use the data for taking decision, for taking a strategic decision. This is a quite important. And then as a communication professional, we need to integrate data from multiple sources, as I said, 
but above all, and especially uh, you will test uh, by participating to the brief project, to the group's project, you needed to cooperate. So you needed to learn how to cooperate with your colleague. That if you think about the organizational context, it means how to cooperate with other departments. So we try to simulate the real life situation during the course, especially for what concerns the analysis of data. Last few slides, and then I will uh, um, provide uh, the, the, the word so to Professor Romanti, uh, is about this strategic messaging. So when we talk about strategic messaging, especially online, we need to learn how to develop the social media brand voice, the digital brand voice of your company. So if you think about the different companies that you know, you maybe um, realize that uh, they talk differently online, some is funny, some is more serious, some is authoritative. So uh, it depends, of course, on the choice made at the beginning of the communication process. So usually it is the digital communication pro professional that needs to define the social media brand voice. So think about a company that you want to work for and uh, think about them and identify them as a person. So think about them uh, and think about the characters the tone of voice that you think they need to use, the language. So you are doing an activity that is required to communication professional at the beginning of the digital communication process. So uh, I put an example from Virgin Atlantic, so like the tone of voice that they want to use. The last uh, topic is about ethics and digital culture, as, as we said, uh, that, uh, that need that you need to help organization in identify ethics as a priority, especially within the digital environment. So uh, that means that you, especially for what concerns technology and uh, because you are managing so much, so, so much data, uh, you need to educate the organization and relate with this information ethically. One practical example that uh, we will work on during our course is the development of, the, of an etiquette. The etiquette is the first document that usually uh, express and show the uh, ethical attitude of organization in using social media. So uh, that means that you need to develop a, a document, but is also what are the values that you want to, to share online? So, and what are the values that you want to respect online uh, when you will work for an organization? And this is something that you need to think in advance in order to be prepared because uh, ethics, social intelligence, and especially tone of voice and way of communicating, there are the three main uh, communication trends that could be very important in the future for what concerns communication professional. Okay, I think that uh, I uh, exploit my, uh, my time. So uh, thank you so much and uh, for your attention and I hope that this presentation could be interesting for you. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Grazia. And uh, I see some uh, questions uh, in, in the chat, but probably um, uh, we, we can also answer to them um, later if, uh, if uh, it is okay for everybody, because um, I, I have seen just uh, I, una, uh, one question about the fact that, uh, so the question is, if this master program is so focused on digital communication, the answer is not. Uh, digital communication is just one course, and this lecture was an example of some contents uh, about artificial intelligence and digital and social media uh, that are taught in our classes. But obviously, uh, what I wanted to show you now is the complete plan of uh, contents of this uh, master program. So I want now to uh, go into detail about the um, main characteristics and main features of this master program. So first of all, that is the uh, structure of our courses and our master program. As you can see, uh, this is a two-year master degree 
and uh, in the first year uh, you have two semesters uh, a, a year so in the first year um, students should attend uh, ju just attend some courses while in the second year uh, you have courses and in the during the first semester uh, and then the second semester is dedicated to other activities so students uh, can uh, opt for a double degree or exchanges uh, erasmus erasmus exchange the exchanges and so on abroad or uh, they can just participate to a field project which is like a consultancy project with companies uh, they can can opt for an internship in Italy or abroad and obviously all the students uh, should work on a, the uh, final dissertation so the thesis so that is a structure of our master program the first year just courses and as you can see uh, the, this, the first semester is about uh, courses which are basic courses, uh, just, to, um, just to teach to our students the basic uh, concepts uh, about organizations, uh, strategic communication, but also strategy and management. Uh, during the second semester, our students uh, uh, start to enter into some uh, more um, specialized fields uh, and they learn, for instance, uh, content management, corporate storytelling, or they also um, uh, start to learn about brand identity and reputation management. And the second year, the first semester of the second year is very specialized because the semester is dedicated to courses such as crisis communication, CSR communication, uh, communication management, me measurement and data analysis, public affairs, financial communication, internal communication. So as you can see, these courses are very, very specialized and uh, and they, um, they, these professors uh, teach to our students all the specializations of uh, the strategic communication field. Um, which are the career opportunities? I think that a, a very uh, a strength of our master program is the fact that it offers a wide array of career opportunities. So at the end of our master program, obviously uh, you can become a strategic communication expert, generally speaking, or you can also be specialized in some specific field. For instance, you can become a brand manager, an identity manager, or a reputation manager. Since a reputation is becoming more and more important for companies and for organizations, some companies and some organizations are introducing the um, profile and the role of a reputation manager, for instance. You can become a digital communication manager or a content management expert, a corporate storytelling expert, or a crisis communication because for instance, if you like very much the crisis communication, you can attend, for instance, the crisis communication course. You can um, select a inter an internship uh, on, uh, in the field of crisis communication. Uh, you can make your final dissertation on crisis communication topics. Uh, so you can just uh, select also this path. Uh, you can become an internal communication manager or a public affairs expert, digital advocacy, digital storytelling, fashion communication, financial communication. We have a lot of students uh, who are selecting at the, at the end of the master program, the field of the investor relations and the financial communication. And finally, the CSR communication. So all the field of the communication in the sustainability field. Um, but which are the five pillars uh, of our master program? First of all, what is important for us is the fact that our students uh, uh, do not learn just contents, but they learn also a lot of soft skills. Uh, to cope with also the challenges, the professional challenges nowadays. So, for instance, we have a career uh, career um, career office, um, which offers to our students a sort of job fitness center, just to develop their the most important soft skills, such as to make good pitches or just to promote themselves and to be able to um, work in teams and so on. 
Uh, and then what is important is that uh, the type of knowledge that our students learn is the actionable knowledge because um, the contents and during the lessons, uh, we use a lot of simulations. For instance, uh, during the course of crisis communication, the professor uh, does uh, a, a lot of simulations of a real crisis and also uh, some um, assignments, a lot of assignments during the semester and they discuss uh, case studies and they work on a lot of briefs and projects uh, which are um, proposed by companies so real real uh, field projects and finally uh, they also can make a field project or an internship at the end of their master program uh, what about the faculty what is important for us uh, is that we have selected uh, professors, so some are academic professors uh, and other are practitioners. So our faculty is a mixed faculty uh, because practitioners uh, teach together with academic professors. So but all of them have international experience and I want just to give you some examples. The professor of CSR communication is Laura Ilia. She is professor of CSR communication at Fribourg University and she comes from Fribourg to teach uh, to our students. Um, and the professor of public affairs is Chiara Valentini. She is a public affairs professor at Uvascular University in Finland. But for instance, for the crisis communication, we have selected a uh, practitioner, a communication practitioner, Luciano Lufarelli is a communication director of a very important company in Italy, uh, which is a Piaggio Aerospace with a lot of international experiences in the field of crisis communication. So you can see that our faculty is a mixed faculty. Uh, then during the year, obviously, uh, we have a lot of visiting professors, so we uh, invite them to uh, have some open lessons, uh, and sometimes we promote these open lessons also on the website, just that because they are online, also open lessons, uh, and we invite uh, also, um, we, we open, we open our classes and we invite also external students to attend these lessons. Um, what about the international partnerships? because that's a really important pillar for our master program. Okay, so um, we have uh, different kinds of uh, um, options uh, among which our students uh, can um, make a, a choice. So first of, first of all, we have developed a lot of partnerships at the international level. These, uh, in this chart, uh, you, you, you see just some examples because obviously the... the yeah, we we have dozen of partnerships uh, at the moment. So, uh, for instance, uh, we have Lund University in Sweden, uh, in Australia, a lot of our students uh, uh, go to Sydney or in Canada or um, to uh, the American University of uh, Cairo and so on. Uh, what is important for us is also that we support students uh, to select uh, the uh, university or the international university, which is more uh, adapt for their, um, for their preferences, for instance. Uh, and then we have developed two double degrees. So in this case, with other student university and Cardiff Metropolitan University, we have developed uh, two uh, double degrees. So it means that students, um, that students go to these universities in the second semester or, or, or the second years, and they attend courses. So they attend additional courses. They pay also a, an additional fee, but they take another another degree. Uh, so, uh, for instance, at the other Swedish university, they take a degree, uh, a, a certificate in marketing communication, and in uh, at Cardiff, they uh, take a certificate, a postgraduate certificate in international business management. So, these are the topics uh, that they, um, our students uh, study in uh, other Street and in uh, Cardiff. Uh, finally, uh, we also uh, have organized in the past, obviously in 2020, we were obliged to cancel them, but we also organized some summer schools. Uh, 
Uh, that is an example of a summer school that we organized in 2018, for instance, in uh, South America, as you can see, uh, we have organized three weeks of intensive courses, for instance, in, about international business management and communication. And uh, during these three weeks, our students uh, met uh, some professors in South America, but also some managers uh, of, uh, as you can see, of different companies. Um, uh, different international companies and they uh, tried to learn how to um, how to uh, adapt strategies and corporate strategies in international settings. Uh, so we hope to be able to organize new summer schools in the uh, in the future, ob obviously in the um, next years. Okay, uh, finally, we have an advisory board of managers. Uh, we have an advisory board of managers. So for instance, these are some companies. Uh, we um, are very, uh, so we cultivate relationships with them because they advise us on the contents, for instance, and they, um, uh, they intervene in our lessons, for instance. They, they make lectures. So they, they propose projects to our students. So we have a lot of exchanges with these companies. And obviously, at the end of the master program, they offer also uh, internships to our students. So uh, we have a deep, uh, in, uh, real deep relationships with a lot of organizations and companies uh, for, uh, obviously, for the advantage of our students. Uh, okay, so uh, last but not least, uh, the requirements for um, to entry and to apply. Um, what is important is, first of all, to check your degree. So our administrative offices, uh, um, um, first of all, need to check your the type of your degree and to check your requisites. Uh, and your proficiency in the English language should be at the level B2. So you should have an official certification or uh, it should be recognized uh, officially. And then if you apply uh, and you can apply online, obviously after the evaluation by our offices, uh, the admission test for international students, so just for international students like you, um, is a text uh, which is a sort of simulation of interviews. So the test will consist of a few general questions, mainly concerning about uh, your inter interest for the strategic communication or for uh, you as uh, yourself as a prospective student uh, of such a program. And uh, we ask you to record a few short videos um, during which you answer to these questions. So um, that is our administrative, oh, that is our admission test for uh, um, international students. Okay, so uh, I have finished my part and now I would like to, um, to ask to Simone, who is, um, who is a student of Strategic Communication Master Program, to uh, just to share his experience at the Master Program and then we will be ready to answer to all your questions. Please, Simone. Thank you, pro Professor. Hi, everyone. So I'm Simone. I'm a student in the first year of Strategic Communication Master Degree Program. And uh, I just finished all my, uh, the first round of my exam. And I can say I'm really glad that I took this choice. Uh, everything went well, so don't worry. Um, and I want to tell you about my experience. So why I chose this class and uh, what are the traits of this course that made me decide for, to take up the strategic communication course. First of all, I've uh, always been um, amused by the role of communication uh, in many aspects of businesses and actually in many aspects of um, our life, our existence, our lives. So um, I was always interested in to understand how communication works into aligning uh, different business units or how to uh, engage publics or how to engage different type of publics as well uh, for the same uh, topic to advocate uh, for, um, of course, from the point of view of a company to advocate different topics um, in, the, in the right moment with the right strategy. And, and actually so far I, I did uh, the, the right choice doing this class. 
Um, I also uh, choose strategic communication for its uh, international settings, uh, its international aspects. We have many international colleagues, I mean, as, a, as students. Um, you can really feel in all the classes, like the link between business strategy Okay, and, and, the, and the communication as well. Before communication was something controlled by the governance, right now communication is in the governance. So it's really nice to, to see how communication evolves uh, for us as uh, future uh, workers. Um, I was also looking for um, a dynamic and practical as general course, you know, to not specialize too much in, a, in, a, in, a, in one field. And as you saw before, thanks to Professor Romenti, uh, we have so many outcomes that we can take, so, so many outtakes uh, as in jobs. Uh, personally, I always had a sweet tooth uh, for sustainability, and this is the right class for me because uh, sustainability is something that nowadays is uh, more and more common, and companies are realizing uh, that things are changing and they have to work to uh, not not just to make stakeholders happy, uh, uh, if anyone uh, knows this term, I mean public happy, but because they need it, they need it for their strategy, they need uh, to uh, be sustainable for its workers, for its uh, environment. So many aspects in, in this field. Um, Another other uh, defining traits of the of this course that, is, that I can talk um, talk about are um, that you can work and study uh, in a continuously evolving field, which is really nice because uh, you, you get to explore some unexplored traits of this uh, of this matter of this subject. Uh, sometimes what, what I find really nice is that you can actually talk to some of the scholars that made the, um, the, the, the papers you are studying on. And that is really nice because uh, from a part you can read about it and then you have some classes with the same person that wrote it and you can ask him question, ask her question. Uh, so, so that is really engaging for our students, but also it makes, uh, makes you understand that this uh, field really new uh, and you, you per uh, percept that. Uh, and so you are in a very dynamic field. I'm a very dynamic person, uh, and so I enjoy this really much. Uh, you have many opportunities, as it has been be, uh, said before by the professor. Um, you, you, you get to work with many projects, with your colleagues. Uh, we actually, this uh, semester, we worked with, with Bosch for um, an, employer, an employer branding strategy, which was really challenging because the budget was uh, really low. So we had to work uh, really a lot to, to do that um, practical strategy. And, and as saying they gave you a budget, you can really understand that that is a, a real brief. So it's not, not just something from a book. Or we got to work with Enel, with Professor uh, Murtarelli, um, trying to, uh, also on sustainability as well, as well um, try to engage different publics in a digital uh, communication from a digital communication perspective. Uh, so it's really challenging. And as last, in the last, um, <clears throat> in another exam, we, we got to work with Technogym and um, in the field of, um, of gyms. So training that at this point with the pandemic going on was really challenging to find a, a solution, a strategy for the company, an actual strategy that then was given to the, the company then we had in all these projects the possibility to uh, to talk with companies to um, so to have also opinions from them and not just from professor which is really important because you don't feel like you're working for nothing you're actually working for a real brief for a real company um, so it's really so challenging but also so dynamic and yeah, you work a lot. It's uh, as, as, again, it's hard, challenging, but it's really cool because you uh, feel what's like what it's like to be to be working in strategic communication field. And so, as this, I, I think I gave you a very wide um, taste of my experience, and I thank you all for the attention. And I give back the word to my professor. Thank you, Simone. And um, I think that some questions could be also for you. Um, 
I, I think that we can just start to, uh, to answer to your questions because uh, I have seen some questions which are uh, important. For instance, uh, due to the current situations, uh, classes are in presence or remote. Um, okay, uh, at the moment, so next week, the lessons will start again because uh, we were in the exam period now. Uh, but uh, uh, at the moment, we are in a blended, <laughs> uh, we, are, we are adopting a, a blended solution. So some days, uh, uh, our students are physically present in Ulm and uh, at university and some days uh, are um, they they have classes online okay so we hope to be able to uh, to come back to university um, physically every day of the week because our students also as Simone said are involved a lot in a lot of uh, practical projects so for them to work on projects uh, um, Online is very hard sometimes, so they they would prefer to be at university in order to work together and to be um, and to work together uh, to at these projects. Okay. Um, there are many questions. I can see now one here is very interesting about the advantages of studying at U, and they also also ask if it's possible to live in Milan without speaking Italian. Can I get this one? Yeah. Course. Yeah, from, from student to student, um, I'm actually not from Milano, um, and it was really, uh, Milano, I, I love Milano personally, I'm from the south of Italy, but I love Milano because I define it uh, one of the only um, European city of, of Italy, so anyone speaks English around and in markets, in, in shops. So about the life in, uh, in Milano, there is really no problem. As you know, uh, Milano is the city of design week and fashion week and so many things. So it's a city that is uh, okay with international uh, cultures. So about that, you really don't have problems. And about uh, you, it, I mean, it's, it's home after, well, I'm here since uh, four years now because I did also the, um, the bachelor degree here. But after the first week, I felt home because it's a really uh, cool university. The campus, you, I hope you, uh, that you will see, uh, it's made so that you feel university. Everything is concentrated and it's in, it has its own area. Uh, all the classes are super technologic and every, every, all the personal are super, is super nice. So really, uh, there's no problem about that. And I trust me uh, when I say it's a really cool university, not because I'm there since four years, but because it really, it really does. I don't know if Stefania or Grazia want to add anything to this or maybe we can move on to the other questions. I think that there is another question for Simone because they ask some tips about the application. Was it hard? Did you have uh, to pass an interview and so on? But I want to be very clear about that. For international students, we don't make an interview, but we ask some videos, very short videos uh, where students, international students uh, should answer to some questions about uh, uh, their knowledge uh, in the field of strategic communication, their commitment and so on. So international, for international students, we don't organize or plan interviews, but just we ask some videos. Uh, for Italian students, for instance, uh, we uh, organize a text, um, so a written exam and an interview. Obviously, everything is in English. So every exam, every lesson, every uh, exchange among uh, students and professors are in English language. Thank you so much, Stefania. And uh, I have seen also another question about the uh, exchange program. And uh, also in this case, I wanted to make a very important distinction because students uh, can go um, abroad with scholarship, uh, 
so they uh, just for an exchange program. So for instance, uh, they can attend some courses instead of uh, attending these courses at Hume University, they attend the same courses abroad in other universities, for instance. Or they can select the option to take a double degree. What does it mean? It means that you take another title academic title from another university. We have just two double degree at the moment in UK. Uh, so um, obviously for taking another title from another university, you have, you have to pay uh, just a fee. So an additional fee to the, um, to the university, uh, for instance, to Cardiff or to uh, Addersfield in UK. So, but what is important is that uh, most of our exchange programs are for free, so um, they are uh, covered by scholarships. Uh, just for double degrees, you have to pay an additional fee. Hmm? Uh, there is another question about job opportunities. So they ask which are the job opportunities for graduating in strategic communication? Yes, I have. Uh, yes, I have shown you uh, the, the chart about a long list of uh, um, labels and of uh, roles that you can um, have in companies or in institutions. Um, because uh, the opportunities and the job opportunities for the our graduates are very, very uh, numerous. Okay, so uh, you can um, try to, uh, you can enter in strategic communication uh, departments, for instance, uh, you can become experts uh, of a specific uh, part of strategic communication, for instance, internal communication or CSR communication, such as Simone, who is very interested in sustainability and wants to work in the sustainability communication field in the future. So you can, uh, what is really important is that this master program offers you a lot of op opportunities uh, to uh, also to select your uh, specialization and your professional path, for instance. Um, you, you can be a consultant, you can become an entrepreneur, or you can become a manager. So it depends, it depends on you. And what is important is that we have an internal career service uh, and placement office uh, with persons who help our students uh, to also to, um, to understand, okay, to understand uh, which which are their characteristics, uh, their features, uh, which are the field which is also more adequate for them. So we support students in this path. I also um, have a lot of uh, uh, conversations with my students uh, and I try to suggest them their path. Uh, they suggest them to, to make some choices. Uh, uh, so it is, um, I think that also as uh, our university also supports a lot of students because we listen a lot, a lot to, to our students. Simone, is it right? Absolutely right. You're right in any part of your um, discussion. Yeah, so we, we, because we are, we are in we are not a big university, so we are a private university. We, we are a small, medium university. So um, for us, the students are at the center of our work, of our everyday work. And it is, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm telling you that because it is the substance of our work. So we, yeah, we yes, yes, we feel that students for us as, are very, very important. And we have a lot of uh, um, every day we meet students, uh, we conversate with students, uh, and uh, uh, we help students uh, to find their, their path for the future. Yes, I can say that. I think this is great. Like, you know, you become part of, um, of a community and you're not just a number within a university. I think this yeah. is great. Uh, we have a question from Gabriel from Argentina. He's asking about the background to join this program. He has, in particular, a degree in Spanish studies. Will it be suitable for the program? Um, okay, I don't remember if 
I have to be very sincere because we have a long list of degrees uh, um, that we uh, at the bachelor level that we accept. Okay, so you should try to first of all to check on the in the website and also to or to write to our uh, offices and they are very quick to answer to you. I think that a degree in Spanish studies could be accepted because uh, we accept sometimes also some students we have accepted in the past some students with a background in English studies or international studies. So I think I think I think so, but um, you know we need to check because we need also to check the code of your um, of your bachelor program. So we have some very technical information that we need to um, to understand before uh, telling you if your uh, bachelor and your title is accepted. Uh, so please check in the website or if it is. Uh, easier to write to our administrative offices and they will um, answer to you very quickly, yes. That's great, thank you so much. There is also another question from Nilo Farmo about the program. So they're asking if what is the difference between social media management and strategic communication? I believe it's a broad subject, if we can okay. try to. Yes. So I, I, I can answer so. Uh, strategic communication included could include the social media management. The strategic communication provide you with um, an education that include other important uh, important uh, competencies, such uh, Professor Romanti explained uh, by showing you the plan of study. So when we talk about strategic communication, we talk about not only social media management, but other, for instance, abilities and skills like um, CSR, corporate social responsibility, uh, financial communications, um, neuromarketing. So uh, there are different subfields included within the strategic communication. So social media management is, a, we can call like a subfield that is addressed to implement strategic communication within the social media environment. So this is the main differences. Thank you so much. There was another question, I think Simone already replied about how easy it is to find an accommodation in Milan, but I believe it's been answered. Yes, I did. I did. That's perfect. They also ask us if there is any sort of age limits for the program. No, at all. <laughs> we don't have age limits. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Perfect. I can see that we have a couple of questions again about the background, but as Stefania was saying on the website, you will find all the information and of course you can also write Yes, um, absolutely. But what I want to suggest to you, for instance, uh, is uh, to write an email to this address, so admission at uh, uh, ulm.it, because this is an email for your um, questions about uh, um, the background, because it is very, very difficult to answer you now. We need to check all the, the your master program uh, in, in detail. Okay, we so you, we need the detailed information about that. Great, and I also wanted to add that after this seminar, we will be sending out an email, of course, and you will have all the contact information, yeah. and uh, we will be probably adding the recording so you can take any screenshot of the that about the part that were more interested for you. We are actually coming towards the end of our conversation and I'd like, first of all, to thank our speakers, but also like to ask if you would like to add anything before closing. A lot has been said and I know there are many other things to add, but maybe just a final advice that you'd like to share with the audience tonight. Yes. Um, I want just to to add that we are um, in a very, we are living 
in a very sad period and uh, yes, in a very uncertain period. So I know that above all students and young people are very stressed about it because uh, uncertainty is not uh, a good element for a young person who is, uh, um, who is, um, who is developing uh, his or her um, education but i think that what is important is to be uh, to be strong and to continue and to um, make the right choices for the future and i think that this pandemic um, showed us that um, the communication is really strategic because we have seen that communication was so important to for instance to share information about uh, uh, pandemic health issues and also so we have seen um, how many problems communication created in different countries, in Italy, but also in other countries. So I think that in the future, to be very prepared in the communication field, to be strategic as communicators will be and will become more and more important. So I think that um, this master program is the right master program to, if you are interested in the field of communication, is the right master program to uh, adopt uh, the um, appropriate and the right approach to the communication. So I hope to see you in Italy and in Milan. Thank you, Stefania. And nice, grazie. And would you like to add anything? And then Simonio, as of course, as well. Professor? Okay, I so I'll oh, just yeah. add something because I see the professor is not much she wants. No, just uh, last thing on the on the sides. Despite the size of your university, we are very welcoming and we look forward to have a and always more and more international uh, audience. So it's nice also for us as uh, students to have to have the, the chance to meet people from all around the world. So really, uh, you'll miss the right choice. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Simone. Grazie. Yes. Absolutely. So thank you so much. And I hope to see you, uh, even if uh, digitally, but hope likely so. Thank you so much. We are searching for uh, international students because intercultural um, students can provide uh, more rich information, the possibility to share experience. That is what we would like to offer to our students. So thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Thank you all for your time tonight. And I would like to thank for the audience for being connecting for your question. You will receive an email from, from us so you can actually then follow up. And I really hope that some of you will get to meet Stefania, Grazia and Simone in person and to visit Milan. So thank you all. And uh, we really look forward to seeing you at the next Yule live seminar. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of the day. Bye. Thank you. Good evening. Bye. Bye.